Hollywood's most famous dog, Lassie, is right here at the Hollywood Walk of Fame, right behind the red velvet rope as she greets her fans. Supporters gathered during the 2010 elections because they believe that Democrats will create better jobs and a stable economy. The Asian Pacific Museum is celebrating its 40th year anniversary with Fusion Fridays. They are kicking off this special event with ballroom dancing, belly dancing, and with a special exhibit on Asian women in history. Another fun feature at Kidspace is the Kaleidoscope, which has echo holes and electromagnetic features which stimulate kids' senses. One of the main goals for the program is for the parents to learn additional skills that will help their child at home. Since the restrictions took effect in November 2008, hundreds of warnings have been handed out, but only 24 citations have been issued. Police now believe the child entertainer is actually a child predator. In Fullerton, I'm Datavik Tigranyan for CBS2 News. Democrats crowded the Renaissance Hollywood Hotel to celebrate their party's winners. Earlier in the evening, Mayor Antonio Viragosa predicted that the Democrats would take the lead in California. My expectation is that tonight uh, Jerry Brown will win big and so will Barbara Boxer. People cheered on as news stations projected Democratic Attorney General Jerry Brown as the winner over Republican challenger Meg Whitman. Democratic U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer was the projected winner over Republican Carly Fiorina. This is my 11th straight election victory. A group of supporters chanted the Spanish language version of Yes We Can. Supporters gathered during the 2010 elections because they believe that Democrats will create better jobs and a stable economy. I voted for Jerry Brown and Barbara Boxer because I realize that this race means the livelihood of my jobs. And um, in California, jobs, jobs, jobs. Although the night ended with only projected winners, early in the morning, Jerry Brown was declared governor of California. In Hollywood, I'm Datavik Tigranyan for Valley View News. Elvis Toriosian likes to smoke in his balcony in Glendale, but he's upset. The city is putting a smoking ban on balconies of condominium complexes and apartment buildings. But Toriosian says it won't work. If you're a nicotine addict, you don't care where you are, you will smoke, you will find a way to smoke. Smokers like these have been hit with the restriction before. In November 2008, the city prohibited smoking in common areas, including parks, libraries, and public transit stops and stations. City resident Margaret Hammond supports the ordinance because of previous family experiences. Uh, my husband at actually was told one year before that if he didn't quit smoking, he would be dead in one year, and he had asthma, and he just kept smoking, and he died. Councilman Dave Weaver initially came up with the idea to prohibit smoking in Glendale. I'm a native of Glendale, and going into restaurants and having people sit near me and smoking and stuff, and the comments that got back, and then I started getting approached by people, we gotta do something about it. The American Lung Association of California graded cities on their tobacco control laws. The city of Glendale received the only overall A in the state of California. Tenants complained to the council that they were exposed to smoke from neighboring units. Narine Mamian is one of many tenants who says she suffers from secondhand smoke. I cannot even leave my door open because the next door neighbor with whom I share a wall, whenever he goes out to smoke, the smoke comes in my house when my door is open and I start to cough and get allergies. Under the current ordinance, a warning must be issued before a citation. Since the restrictions took effect in November 2008, hundreds of warnings have been handed out, but only 24 citations have been issued. Officials say under the ordinance, offenders face fines of up to $500, with the fourth violation in the year becoming a misdemeanor. In Glendale, I'm Datavik Tigranyan for Valley View News. These are some of the kids who have fun at Kids Space Children's Museum. Located in Pasadena, Kidspace provides hands-on experience in the arts and sciences. Some of them have a designed science component to teach specific concepts, and other ones are just meant to be more free exploration so kids can really 
be the agents of their own learning. Children can play at Bugsy's Diner, where they learn about different insects and pretend to be a bug using their hands and body. Owen Brady says his favorite activity at KidSpace is the ant hole. Sometimes there's a red ant that lights up on one side, like halfway up the hole. Outside, children ride on track tracks and enjoy themselves in the water play area. Museum lead Shanice Shacklow says the tricycle tracks teach children to get along. Being aware that the world isn't centralized around them, there are other kids and they have to play with them, not just in their own little bubbles. In the kids' basin, water falls like rain continuously, while children fill their buckets with water and run back and forth pouring the water back into the basin. Another fun feature at Kids Space is the kaleidoscope, which has echo holes and electromagnetic features which stimulate kids' senses. This multicolored tunnel lets children touch and explore spectrums through color and electricity. One wall is devoted to kids who purchase a tile and make their own mark on it, so they will be part of Kids Space for years to come. In Pasadena, I'm Data Viktigranian for Valley View News. Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Data Viktigranian. What is the difference between obese and overweight? Overweight children are, are prone to health issues, and obesity is severe, leading to severe issues. We will discuss politics, budget cuts, tuition raises, and voting among college students. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. What are your top priorities for your district? Well, first and foremost, it's the budget. Um, that's the elephant in the room. The city is looking at roughly a $350 million budget deficit. Who would you like to see be the next mayor of Los Angeles? It's a great question, um, and I constantly ask residents that very same question. You know, we've got a lot of qualified people running. I think it's still a wide open field. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm Tata Viktigranian, and this is On Point.